Vincent was the youngest of the three of us. Um, it was myself and my sister and Vincent. And um, very sweet, um, lovable, um, mischievous <laughs> sometimes. And um, just very protective over my sister and I, even though he was the youngest, he was always very protective over us. He used to call himself the little big brother. He was just a happy little boy. From the very beginning, he asked a lot of questions. He was curious as to his environment. He made friends with everyone. Our house seemed to have been the spot where kids would come and gather until I got home from work. <laughs> what are all these kids doing here? I came home one day from U of M when I was in school, and he was standing out on the porch and had all these little kids, and he's just talking to them about life. <laughs> and, uh, he's a youngster himself, a teenager, and he's just telling them, you know, stay in school and all kinds of things, and these kids are hanging on to his every word. Mm -hmm. So that's that was him. Teachers thought he was hilarious. Yeah, he was he liked definitely school. the class clown. <laughs> he did like school. <laughs> he was always building things and making things. I came home one afternoon, and he—I guess he was eight, nine. He had built a tree house in our backyard. Oh, he would get, he'd get into trouble. Oh, yeah, I mean, boys will be boys. Uh, and he would get into fights. Oh, some of his best friends were some of his best fights. <laughs> he had scars all over him. They'd fight one morning or evening, and the next day they're riding their bikes. Vincent never walked away from a fight, but he was always the one trying to be the peacekeeper afterwards. He told me that he wanted to go into the Marines because he would do good and that they wanted him. Everything from his childhood, growing up in the inner city, all the fights, the scratches, his instincts, um, just, it was perfect for him. He became a man, a, a strong young man, right before our eyes. He did five deployments, okay? Four deployments in Iraq, starting in March 19th of 2003. And he, his last deployment, was in November to Afghanistan. When they walked into the room, it was two gentlemen, two Marines. And I wanted him so much to say, your son is okay. But what he said was, I regret to inform you. And when, uh, when he said that, that was just, uh, I regret to it for you. I asked the Marine, how did he die and where did he die? And he said, in combat. He was in combat. And uh, I just lost it. I could not imagine my world without Vincent. Yo, dear! Alright! Those Marines were really hurting. Vincent. He supervised uh, 37 Marines, and his commander really respected Vincent. We are all better Marines and human beings because we were fortunate enough to know, work, and work with a man like Staff Sergeant Bell. Those of you who were able to sit here today and call him a friend are the most fortunate among us.
before the ceremony at Arlington, um, I went online and just, you know, looked at the website and saw all of the the most prestigious people buried at Arlington National Cemetery, um, from civil rights leaders to astronauts, to presidents, Thurgood Marshall, and then Vincent. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, it's gotten even more prestigious now that Vincent is there. I'm so proud of him, so very proud of him, the work that he did and the, the honor that he received. The attitude that he had about what he did and the reasons why he chose to be a Marine. And him knowing all along that at any given time he could make that ultimate sacrifice. I am the proudest mother on the face of the earth. He, to me, is a true American hero.